And finally, we, talk, we uh, need to talk about the building component specifications. But going back to the work specifications, we had a list or summary of building components. If we just concentrate on that for a minute, the summary of building components for this particular contract is listed here. For example, roof surface, brickwork repairs, masonry work on, uh, on extension, etc., etc. Each one of these items that are mentioned here have their own building component specifications. And the building component specifications are chapter four of the work specifications. But each building component specifications is designed for one specific team of workers who actually do the work on site of building that particular component. So basically, if we look at it uh, as, a, as a kind of uh, uh, recipe, the building component specifications consist of, first of all, a list of drawing numbers that relate to that particular work. For example, if we're putting up uh, brickwork uh, on, uh, or we're building a brick wall, which uh, drawings relate to that particular item? What materials uh, relate to that particular item? And the materials should be mentioned in chronological order so you don't forget them. And finally here, how should they be executed? Uh, I mean, uh, we're not going to tell a bricklayer how to, uh, to brick up a wall because he, he's done that already. F he's had training for four years to, to learn how to do it. But what you should tell the, the bricklayer here is what particular things are important. For example, how high should the DPC go? What kind of uh, coal asphalt uh, adhesive should you use to, 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 to paste the DPC, DPC? And what overlap should it have? The important stuff, in other words, because actually bricking up the brickwork, he knows. But you might tell him, for example, what bond he should brick up the brickwork in, and so on. And then the relationship to previous work and following work. In other words, what should he look at before he takes over the, the brickwork? In other words, should the foundation have a particular tolerance before he takes over uh, the, the brickwork? Otherwise, he might be building the brickwork on a bad foundation. And also, how should he leave the brickwork? I mean, what sort of, uh, what so sort of surface uh, tolerance should the brickwork have, and so on. So, these are the, the actual, uh, this is the actual build-up of the, uh, the building component specification, and it's designed for people working on the building site. So, in reality, you shouldn't really mention norms and, 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 and uh, euro norms and so forth, because uh, that you know they don't, they have no understanding of euro norms in detail, so it'd be uh, that should be done in uh, the building uh, in the work specifications under references out here under norms and so on. Don't mention euro norms in these. I, I know uh, that there are examples where it's done, but it's actually incorrect to do so. Now this was just a summary. The actual building. Uh, uh, component specifications is chapter 4 as you can see here so first of all when you're filling chapter 4 you should do it only for your detailed design 2 part in other words each student must lay, make one building component specification relating to his detailed design 2 work uh, the stuff he's drawing and so on must have these building component specifications so first of all tell them where, where you can find the building component for example it's between module line this and that, or on the north facade or the south facade or whatever. Then you give the list of drawings, as I mentioned before, here, under drawing references and so on. And then uh, what uh, adjoining building components are there to this particular component that they're going to build? Is there any design work? Uh, this might be a, a strange question to, you know, to or a strange thing to give uh, people doing the actual work on site, but in some contracts, for example, it could be the ventilation contract. Uh, the, vent uh, the ventilation uh, contractor might have to uh, to to provide some sort of uh, design uh, for the ventilation because the architect hasn't done it. Maybe uh, the routing of different uh, uh, pipes and and ducts in the building. Uh, the materials and products must be mentioned in chronological order, as mentioned, as, as mentioned before. So, in other words, when you're mentioning the brickwork, you'd start with the DPC and uh, mention what uh, asphalt adhesive you're going to use, and so on and so forth. Then you, use, you, you, you mention things in the right order, and then you won't forget them. And in the execution, you tell the, uh, the worker here what 
important stuff he needs to, to, to take care of with regard to the execution. You don't actually tell him how to execute the brickwork because he knows how to do that. Uh, the tolerances for services, you tell him here. If there is some sort of test sample that needs to be done before he goes on with the work, for example, he has to build up, let's say, this five square meters of brickwork and then call the uh, inspection and when they've approved the bench and benchmarked his work, then he can carry on with it. If they disapprove, then he had to uh, break it down and so on. Uh, the quality assurance, what type of quality assurance he should take care of, and you can here uh, make reference to the tender control plan, and uh, on the basis of that tender control plan, a control plan will be made by the contractor to actually do this piece of work. And if he should consider something about the work environment, about when he should work and how much noise and vibration he should produce, or what the maximum values for these things are, they should be mentioned here. And that about ends the uh, video about the uh, building component specifications. All you have to remember is that there should be one building component spe specification per student in the group.